They come one by one, all seeking answers to puzzling questions and ways of coping with the uncertainties and challenges that life can bring. Almost universally, they leave with new optimism and new tools to help them deal with the issues of concern. They are people with intellectual and developmental disabilities, or the parents of children with disabilities, and most have felt the frustration and pain of struggling to deal with the system. These individuals have come to partners in policy making, and their needs and circumstances vary, but all have sought ways to find new answers and to bring about change. They learn how to make their voices heard and to play a role in policy development. Wanda Mills has lived with difficult disabilities for much of her life, but persevered and went on to employment with the tax department in the town of Silva. When her parents passed on, she moved to her own residence, cooks all her own meals and maintains the household. She credits the Partners Program with helping her to interact in the community. Completely. I always wanted to be a public speaker. And that was a crazy idea. But partners helped me realize that I could be a public speaker. And that has always been a life dream of mine. From my perspective, it is to help parents and children with disabilities to not put the child in a box, but let them be all they can be at whatever level that may be. That is so Wanda is increasingly speaking out on issues of concern to people with disabilities, addressing groups in a number of North Carolina communities. Partners Program Director Deborah Whitfield, an attorney who herself is a graduate of the program in Texas, understands the growth process and now keeps the proceedings on track in North Carolina. There are some challenges. People who believe it's, you know, they can't do it because many of them haven't left their own communities. Many have never gotten on public transportation. Many have not even lived in a hotel room. So when you see those, individuals who come to this training for the first time, get that experience and soar, it is a delight to be a part of that process. The creator of the Partners Advocacy Program, Dr. Colleen Wick of Minnesota, said it was prompted by a specific need and then grew from there. The last witness at the three-hour hearing was a young parent from International Falls, Minnesota. And everyone was giving her mixed messages about what to do to testify in front of U.S. Senator Dave Durenberger. And after that hearing, two of us got together and we realized we could teach the skill that was missing. And we could do this in a systematic way as well as teach best practices about disability services. And as a result, we created this eight weekend program uh, that's designed to teach both what is best practice in education, assistive technology, living and employment, as well as how to communicate with local, state and federal officials. Because the need for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities to advocate for themselves is not limited by boundaries, partners programs are being conducted in most states in the U.S. and a number of foreign countries. The individual needs vary, but there are some common themes. A desire for full inclusion often rises to the top. I think that the tips and the tools that you learn about advocating for yourself or for others are great. Um, you can use them for any disability. Being a blind person, you know, I come against things all the time as far as um, what I can and can't do, you know, because I'm blind. Um, they don't know what I can and can't do because they don't want to give you a chance and you have to speak up for yourself. So I learned to be more assertive 
speak up for myself um, and sell myself. I have to do that. While many graduates focus on issues of housing and employment, Doug Hedrick has zeroed in on respect, campaigning for the use of language that sees individuals with disabilities as people. The father of a son with autism, Hedrick went before the board of his local school district and got action. The eight-month program gives you a lot of tools in your tool belt, and I'm just starting to use a few of them. Some of the ones that I've used is being able to speak to school boards and facilitating a people-first language policy. What partners asked me to do in the course was to change or create policies. And I saw an opportunity with my school board in Burke County to say, let's use a people-first language policy. Let's adopt that. And the interesting thing is, and this is what I've learned in partners, is when you explain this to people, people generally do the right thing. People want to facilitate change if it's the right thing. And using a people first language policy is just a very good thing. And they adopted this policy last year and they're using it today. Others have joined Hedrick as advocates of people first language, a movement that has been supported and pressed by the North Carolina Council on Developmental Disabilities. Together with other partners graduates, Hedrick has helped push for people first language with webinars, telling supporters how they can carry the message to their own communities. They are demonstrating leadership in their communities, as many partners graduates do. Deborah Wilson completed the program and later was named a member of the North Carolina Council on Developmental Disabilities. She came to partners when she was struggling to find ways of opening up workable education pathways for her daughter, who has a visual impairment. We were having difficulties with our Onslow County school system where we live and she was having to travel about two hours on a weekly basis just to be able to attend school and have to live somewhere besides her home environment. And someone told me about partners and asked if they thought I would be interested and I didn't know anything about partners at the time. And what happened was ultimately learning and being able to meet the people that partners, <laughs> it's almost like they pull them out of a hat, but they're absolutely fantastic. And those people were able to show us not only knowledge, but give us the power, show us power that we actually had, that we could change and make a difference to bring our children either home in our case or do what needed to be done so that they could get education in every situation for us. And that's just being parents of our children with the disability. One young graduate of the program, self-advocate David Chatterton, feels that the Partners program has been a great experience and helped in preparing him for a career. I went into Partners because, you know, I wanted to meet new people, but also I just kind of wanted to uh, make a change in my life and uh, to kind of uh, get a strong sense of uh, you know not letting people like uh, put you down and whatnot. It was overwhelming uh, just because it goes deeper into the whole disability area. Um, I, I love to educate myself and uh, I, I love that others educate me as well so going into partners you meet a lot of people uh, that share a lot of the same visions as you. David is now looking to the future to continue his education, pursue a career, and use his advocacy skills. Nurturing leadership and advocacy and providing the voices of the future for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities is a primary purpose of partners in policymaking. Holly Riddle, the executive director of the North Carolina Council, says it is a strong supporter and funder of the program. Many boards, commissions, committees, offices are staffed or are joined by partners in policy making graduates. When people come to partners, they are the finest leaders that we get application from, and when they come out, uh, they can't be beat. It has always been the case that it is from individuals with disabilities and families that innovations come 
when you're that close to the life of someone or when it is your own life, uh, you think on your feet. So many of the ideas that inform the field today at a systems level begin in someone's living room, in a classroom, with an individual, or with a family, many of them partners in policymaking graduates. There remains a challenging road ahead for people with intellectual and developmental disabilities. And the hope for change lies in improving the policies and systems designed to support and encourage these individuals and their families. It is people, such as the graduates of the Partners in Policymaking program, who will bring about that system change. And after Partners became empowered, and knowledge is power, and once that happened, the bitterness, the anger, it left. And now you learn, and you know that people are people, and you learn how to deal with every, pe every different person there is in every situation. And those situations, they need to be used to help benefit not only my child and my daughter, but they need to be used to benefit all, all disabilities all disabilities and everything that I can do and everything I've learned is important so that I keep my my anger out of it that it's not about the people it's about situations that we need to resolve and how we can go about doing those things and there again the more knowledge you have the more power you have which ultimately can make a change and that's what that's what it's about Partners in Policymaking, a program to educate and to motivate, a program of action, a program for the future.